What's going on everybody? It's Poodle back with another Madden Ultimate Team video guys and today I'm gonna be going over some of the stuff that was revealed yesterday during the Ultimate Team Deep Dive trailer guys. A few more things to go over here. There's some pack art, some player reveals, some strategy card reveals, a few things you guys probably didn't see or know prior. Although, there is some good stuff in here. There is some interesting stuff as well as like I see at least the pack art on the screen. I'm actually a big fan of this pack art although the veterans one looks like a Buffalo Wild Wings ad. But I'm a big fan of these little pack boxes because in real life that's kind of what they are. They're like little boxes. They used to be like the tin boxes, right? You open them up off the cap and there's packs inside and, or cards. So I kind of do actually like that. But before we get into the video and go through everything, make sure down below, hit that subscribe button, turn the noti bell. Give this video a big thumbs up as always, guys. If you want to be shouted out in the Poodle Squad, all you got to do is like the video and comment down below Poodle Squad. If you do those things, you are entered for a chance to be shouted out like I've been doing each and every video. Today's shout outs, Alvin Kamara. Again. He's gotten it now twice this week, guys. So if you guys want to get into this, all you got to do is enter and do it. So far, almost everyone who has commented has gotten one. So all you got to do is do it, and you'll have a great chance of being shouted out. Now, getting on to this, Superstar Welcomes Pack, Veterans Loyalty Fantasy Pack. Like I said, this is going to be the packs you probably see early, early in the game, right? It could be the, It's either going to be at EA Access launch or at day launch. It really just depends on how they do it. They have announced that Rick Premieres will be their day one. But for all you know, you may not get this stuff. Because like I said, Superstars may not be until the launch night of the uh the 20th right the launch day or the night before so that's definitely a big thing which they have done like the midnight release before is when they drop the superstars mvp which would be the 19th going into the 20th but yeah we got that moving on over guys this is, it is a uh, lineup screen right here so you can see right here it looks very similar to last year's lineup screen for the most part i mean you see the centers the guards tackles tight ends everything else it does look a little zoomed out right now i wonder why it didn't show them like clicked on a little bit like it usually does it does look a little bit more spacious uh spacious though which i do kind of like you know wide receiver one two three on all of that as well fullback halfback one tight end one okay so i mean it looks, it looks pretty cool if you see you have offense defense special teams specialist strategy and visuals um next guys here's some more base elite reveals that we didn't have before so if you guys do look closely you see ryan Tannehill, dak prescott matt ryan kyler murray and matt stafford so kyler murray is a base elite. that's pretty cool i still think he's better than an 80 overall base elite. i think that's kind of bs same thing with dak um, I think Dak and Murray should both be above Tannehill, in my personal opinion. Murray was Murray was rookie of the year in his rookie season, which should have made him a base lead off the rip. Then Murray was a half, for most of the season an MVP candidate at some point. Until he kind of got hurt and kind of stopped. He literally he got hurt and stopped running as much. He uh, kind of kept the running to a minimum for a little bit because he was kind of hurt. And he wasn't being as risky, of course, because he was hurt. But Murray and Murray was a borderline MVP candidate, and so would Dak. He not, you know, broke his ankle up. But even then, they still kept Saquon as one of the top base elite running backs. So I don't know why they send Dak down. Oh, we got Matt Ryan, Matt Stafford, uh, Ryan Tannehill, of course. And Josh Allen, we knew already. Lamar, we knew already. But those are some pretty cool base elite reveals right there. Like I said, it look Kyle looks really good as a base elite. Might be a nice little budget piece to start the year. Probably only costs like 10k. I'd say 14k or less uh kind of well, that'll be the parameters if you get some good speed if they give him at least an 80 something speed could be a nice budget quarterback to start the year with uh next guys you can see here just the solo challenges some stuff right here kind of what it looks like i mean basic art so here we go madden ultimate team features that we'll see at launch new strategy items of course new halftime adjustments new stats on player items dynamic gameplay integration new user experience and mud hub new ultimate season new content programs i'm mostly excited for the new ultimate seasons i think that's gonna be super fun given that gives us a grind every single season right that'll give us something to do like kind of like a battle pass why do you log on to, some people still log on to fortnite monthly just to get their battle pass skins done and to get all their stuff and then log off but at least you're logging on because without that grind there's really nothing to hop on sometimes for once you're bored of a game which i kind of like because like the problem with last year guys was that the season's rewards sucked Getting trophies had no benefit to you. They sucked. Literally, the only thing the game was good for was maybe weekend league. And once you start reversing sweaties enough weeks in a row and your team's not good enough, you stop trying. That's the other thing. Weekend league is too sweaty. So if you don't have the top tier team, pretty much only the top players are playing. So we lost a lot of the casuals. We lost a lot of like, you know, regular teams, team teams competing. But ultimate season, that gives you like an offline grind. Similar to why people love MLB the show is that literally I was playing MLB this year and I'm not that great at MLB. I'd say I'm average. But the reason I was able to play for like two months straight, I grinded out this great no money spent team. I not many. I went on every single day, played for hours, and I was able to do that because I didn't have to play one online game to get those to get those rewards. I played um, the monthly awards. I did solos. I did um, objectives. I did team affinity. There were so many things I could do without having to touch online, and that's the problem. Madden doesn't have that. I mean, the solos they have right, but that takes like no joke. Those solos you can grind out in like a few hours. MLBs took me a few days, but you can grind this out a few hours for modest rewards, like a base elite, a pat, right? 
the days of the packs were better because people like packs that gave you anyone would do them because they wanted packs so they gotta implement more packs but of course new ultimate season gives you something to grind for every year with an exclusive player kind of like the kind of like the june may april monthly rewards in mlb i really do like that uh, moving on guys here you can see the blue card so i didn't see this before this is called man to man there's gonna be a so the other ones were common uncommon damn i can't i can't see what that word says it's oh god um can you guys see that common uncommon i think rare it's very messed up but i think i think it's a rare but that's pretty cool kind of like fortnite right common green blue blue tack kind of thing so yeah the blue man to man so as you guys can see common gets three ability boost uh uncommon gets four and rare gets five so guys if we get up to legendary like one of those you probably end up seeing like seven to eight like ability boost maybe even doubled up maybe you get plus two per uh each thing so it'll be like plus two man plus two catch plus two press but like we were saying guys we were saying with Jalen ramsey how could ramsey get all his thresholds day one right there man to man you can get a man coverage up his catch press play rec and tackle so That'll get him all threshold besides zone, which maybe if you get another one, you can maybe add zone onto it or something, which will have, that remains to be seen. But that is a man to man one. So maybe there's like an, a regular coverage one instead of just having a man to man one, which is pretty cool as well. Um, here you go, Devontae Adams powered up. Just a quick little card out right there, which looks pretty cool. Then we got, oh, so here you can see some AP right here. So second winning wind and quick draw are one AP each. Bazooka is going to be zero AP, which is weird. Uh, so X factors are no AP, right? That just goes in the one of three players. Okay. So back to it. Second win and quick draw, 1 AP. I mean, we kind of assume those, but it's nice to see. AP limit 12, which they did reveal yesterday as well. Now, this is a halftime adjustment, which you guys have probably already know. At halftime this year, you can change your X factors. and it, Well, AP is probably. The X factors are probably on the players already. You can change the players you're going to be using uh, for those, which is cool. Because let's say you're versing a guy, right? You come out. He has a horrible D-line, horrible front seven. But you have your team stacked out with wide receiver and quarterback abilities. And honestly, they're secondary stacked. But their D-line's not good. He has no inside stuff or anything. Yeah, at halftime, you can switch to your running back abilities and your O-line abilities and just completely demolish him in the trenches. Or vice versa, you come out with a stacked secondary with acrobat everywhere and everything, and then you versus a guy who runs 35 times a game. You can switch at halftime to your inside zone, outside, uh, outside stuff, inside stuff on the entire D-line, and maybe out of my way, and a few other things as well. Secure tackler, maybe unfakeable. So a lot of cool things you can do with that. Here we go, gridiron notes, features, and depth breakdowns, and new user flow. Launch program content, three days early access, EA Play, Team Campaign, Team Affinity, Ultimate Season, Ultimate Champion, Gridiron Forge launches August 20th, and Superstar MVP. A lot of good stuff to start the year, guys, which I do actually appreciate because last year, the, the start was dry. It was fun. Like, the start was like banger for like a day. No joke. Like, if you guys even saw YouTube, like everyone's YouTube videos did well for like a few days, and then they didn't drop content for three weeks. Like, literally almost a month went by, and Madden was just super dry. No one played it. And by the time they launched it, a lot of people had already quit the game. With the game in order to keep it alive for as long as possible. But yeah, a lot of stuff, guys. I mean, the Gridiron Forge is going to be a solo challenge sequence that everyone needs to play. Because JC Jackson's a beast. Um, which I actually like. They made it at 87 overall. For this reason, exactly. Like I said before, when they drop solo sequences and stuff that give you a player, right? Only people who can use that player are going to play it. So the problem when they do like rivals with 84 overalls or team affinity with 84 overalls right people who buy packs or people who grind the game aren't even going to waste their time they're going to go right to weekend league which becomes a weekend league perpetuality problem which that's all we want to go to every week right but by dropping a gridiron forge with jc jackson that powers up to 88 and you get his power up and player almost every god squad can almost use a jc jackson off the rip cam chancellor everyone could use that ultimate season 91 reward right if they, had, if they made that guy in 87, everyone would be like, eh, only the no money sw uh, spent guys and maybe people who, like, the first season would have won for him. After that, they'd be like, my team's all 90s, I don't need that guy. Making him a 91 means if ultimate season lasts, like, let's say two months, right, so it lasts all the way to October, if it's a 91 overall that we can get, we can get him pretty much in the first month, probably, right? Unless it's, like, one of those things you need, like, 45 daily objectives or whatever. But if it's not, if it's one of those things you can grind at your own pace, if you can get that ultimate champion in the first month, you have a 91 overall at a time where there's probably at max maybe a 90 89 overall legend powered up 90 so you have the highest player in the game and by october that player will still be at top like three overall right we might only have like 92 overalls by then maybe 91 so still gonna be and then by that time we have another ultimate season that one's gonna be 94 so you're gonna consistently get top tier players in the game so i'm a, I'm a big fan of this whole system but guys it's about it for the video hopefully you guys did enjoy if you're into the channel hit that subscribe button turn that noti bell let's get to 23k subs guys can we get 25 likes in this video every time you guys like the video the channel does better the video does better so if you guys are watching you know you enjoy all you got to do is go down below and like it it takes no time out of your day just get it done it helps me a lot thank you guys for watching i'm out peace